Hi everyone, I'm Gary Shapiro. There is a lot of angry reaction by both Democrats and Republicans to Attorney General Jeff Sessions' plan to go after legal marijuana. He's expected to announce changes in federal policy affecting states like Colorado that have legalized pot. Those changes could pose a threat to a multi-billion dollar industry in Colorado that employs more than 34,000 people. Sessions is rescinding an Obama-era policy that let legalized marijuana flourish without federal intervention across the country. Colorado GOP Senator Cory Gardner said in a tweet today that the Justice Department has trampled on the will of the voters of Colorado and other states. Gardner says this action contradicts what Sessions had told him before he was uh, confirmed. It will be interesting to hear from the president on this. During a campaign stop, Nine News political reporter Brandon Ritterman posed this very question. He would use federal authority to shut down sales of recreational marijuana in states like Colorado. Yeah, I wouldn't do that, no. So you think Colorado should be able to do what it's doing? No, I think it's up to the states, yeah. I'm a states person. I think it should be up to the states, absolutely. Sessions has compared marijuana to heroin and blames the drug for spikes in violence. Nine News legal analyst Scott Robinson joins me now to talk a little bit about this. So this change in federal policy, it doesn't necessarily prohibit legal marijuana, but it doesn't really approve of it either. So. Right. There's always been this tension ever since the Cole memo was issued uh, four years ago in 2013, uh, which basically told the attorney generals, don't go after marijuana unless it's organized crime or being sold to children, crossing state lines, that sort of thing. Uh, and we haven't heard yet what uh, Attorney General Sessions is going to say, but we're expected to hear that he's going to give U.S. attorneys all over the country the power to go in and start enforcing federal marijuana laws, even in those states that legalize marijuana for recreational use. So if it's up to the federal prosecutors to decide, what if one for one area decides, yeah, I'm going to go after them, one from one area says, no, I'm going to leave it be, then it's different laws for different states. It's almost a certainty that in some states the U.S. attorney will go after legal marijuana, and in other states they may just take the same hands-off policy that has been in effect for the last three or four years. So a lot of confusion out there, I'm guessing. Guaranteed confusion. And the real issue here is what do you do with the eight states that have totally legalized marijuana and the 29 states that have medical marijuana? I think we're going to expect a, an extraordinary difference of treatment of potential offenders from state to state. From a legal standpoint, as you mentioned, you have the federal government where uh, pot is illegal, and then you have some states that have legalized it. Who trumps who in that, no pun intended, in that, in that whole matter? Well, it, it's a matter of federalism, and states' rights is always at odds with the idea of a federal government. But there's no doubt that the preemption clause of the United States Constitution puts the federal government in a position, if they choose to do so, to enforce marijuana laws in every state to the nth degree. And the reality is that that has not happened. A majority, according to recent polls of Americans, favor legalizing pot. So this may not be the most popular move that Attorney General Jeff Sessions makes. We'll see what happens. As always, Scott Robinson, thank you. My pleasure. Appreciate it. All right. By the way, we're going to have a lot more analysis and a lot more reaction to this issue coming up a little bit later on Nine News. Today is a good time to remind all those transplants out there that Denver is more than just hipsters and Subarus. Now you can bust out your cowboy boots. It's time for the National Western Stock Show Parade. And Amelia Earhart and Danielle Grant are on the 17th Street right now where the parade kicked off. Yeehaw, guys! Yeehaw! That's right, Gary. We are proud to be a cow town here in Denver. This is the official kickoff to the National Western Stock Show. The parade is about to get underway, and Danielle, about 40 longhorn steer are about to make their way down 17. They are going to be charging down here. You know, we're kind of in this holding pattern right now. The excitement, though, you can feel it in the air. As so many folks are down here, the streets are completely lined with kids, parents, even businessmen and women just taking a lot lunch break because they have to see what is going on down here in downtown Denver. Really an iconic afternoon here in the city. 
It really is. And last year, the parade actually got canceled yep. because it was so cold and there was ice on the ground. And of course, hooves and ice do not, do not come mix. together. <laughs> no, we have to protect those longhorn steers that are going to be coming down. I think there's about 40 or 50 of them, followed by, of course, all of the royalty. We saw Thunder, mm -hmm. the mascot of the Broncos, and also the mayor. Uh, so it's just so exciting. The kids are around, some of them, in their cowboy hats, cowgirl hats, yep. looking pretty cute. We're just kind of waiting, waiting and waiting for everyone to come on down. Yep. And it is definitely worth the wait. Yep. So we're going to get video of the steer as they make their way down 17th. The parade kicks off right here at Union Station yep. and goes 15 blocks all the way down Ooh. to the Brown Palace. So, I I see someone. oh yeah, it's about to get underway. <laughs> so we'll check back with you in a little bit, Gary, but here come those steer. All right, guys. I love that parade. Hey, thank you much. Appreciate that. President Trump predicted on Twitter that the new GOP tax plan is going to be very good for the stock market, and that seems to be proving out. The Dow Jones Industrial Average topped 25,000 for the first time ever this morning. The gains likely powered by optimism that the tax plan will boost U.S. growth and by global economic recovery that is underway. This is a live look at Camp Maju, New Jersey. It shows snow-covered streets, poor visibility, it just looks cold and miserable out there, doesn't it? This is the weather bomb cyclone. It sure sounds scary enough, and it fits the storm that is brewing off the U.S. East Coast. Meteorologists use the term when a storm intensifies rapidly. They say the worst of this storm will be high winds and bitter cold that follow, but uh, really brutal weather seems to be staying out to sea for now. We'll keep an eye on that and let you know if uh, things get really bad. In other news, Nicole Cameron, a mom who left her two-year-old son inside a freezing car for more than 14 hours, has been sentenced to eight years in prison and three years probation. Nine News reporter Noel Brennan is at the courthouse in Adams County. Noel, that she admitted that she left her child when she was so drunk that she blacked out. That's right, Gary. Nicole Carmen told the judge that she thought she'd been in a car accident when all of this happened. Court documents show that she downed six shots of vodka before she left her son in the parking lot of a strip mall in Thornton. When officers found the boy, he was alive but was suffering from hypothermia and had frostbite as well. It was just partially buckled into his car seat in that car. Well, this morning in court, Carmen dabbed tears from her face. Attorneys on both sides spoke. Then Carmen had the chance to address the court. She said she blacked out the day she left her son in that car, which was covered in about six inches of snow when officers found it. She broke down this morning when talking about what happened to her son and describing her struggles with drinking. I do have a problem. I love my kids and I put them before me all the time. All the time. I can't tell you the struggles that I've had in my life to have to do it on my own with no family support. I am a good person and I am a good mom and I love my kids more than anything in this world. And I take full responsibility for what I did. I know I messed up. I can't, I, can't, well, I will tell you right now, if my son wasn't here today, I wouldn't be either. I would not have been able to live with myself. The judge in this case called the crime atrocious and jaw-dropping, but he also expressed sympathy for Carmen and her upbringing, Gary. He could have given her 10 years in prison, but chose to go with eight years and three years probation. All right, Noel Brennan in uh, Brighton this morning. Thank you much for that. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Hey, welcome back, everyone. We are live here in downtown Denver, kicking off all of the festivities for the National Western Stock Show. The parade is just begun. We saw the Longhorn Steer making their way down 17th Street. It was incredible. And now, oh, look at these beautiful horses. They will continue to just clop their way down the street. Oh, everyone is so excited to see all of these folks make their way down the street to the Brown Palace, of course, which is where they all end. Let's chat about the weather because temperatures this afternoon could not be any better. In fact, we'll be in the upper 40s right here for the parade. Plenty of sunshine unless you're in the shade like us and it does feel a little cooler out there. The views across downtown Denver looking fantastic with some of that blue sky around and that's going to continue really for much of the day the next couple of days. So our daytime high today about 51. 
We're going to be uh, looking at all that sunshine continuing. Oh, my goodness. The hooting and hollering. We're having too much fun down here at the parade. Across the state, the weather should be relatively quiet with daytime highs in the upper 40s and into the 50s. Future casts will fly through the rest of tonight with clear skies. By about 11 o'clock tonight, just a few high-level clouds out there throughout the overnight period into tomorrow morning. It's still fairly dry. A few clouds out there. Otherwise, by Friday afternoon, a weak little disturbance moves into the mountains. This really won't bring them much in the way of snowfall, but they will have just a few light flurries out there. By late tomorrow evening, it should be dry and the forecast looking pretty good for us as we head toward the start of our weekend. Across the country, a completely different story as this huge storm system makes its way in and around the New England area. Boston has just been bombarded with snow blizzard light -like conditions the storm system picks up by tomorrow night and finally starts to move offshore back here at home tonight temperatures cooling off into the mid 20s under mostly clear skies and your seven day forecast showing the 50s for the next couple of days on saturday It'll be kind of the calm before our next storm moves in. You'll start to feel the winds and then overnight into Sunday, that big cool off horizon, we might have a little bit of a rain snow mix. By Monday, we're back to the 60s and we kind of stay there with the drier conditions for most of next week. All right, we got to bring it out here because it is just so much fun. Okay, is this a little mutton busting going on? Look at that little girl. She is ready. She is ready for the real deal. She has her cute pink chaps on and she has her helmet. Safety first, girlfriend. I love it. I love it. Amelia, this has uh, just been a, a, such a riot and it goes so fast too. So you got to get down here to see those steers. If you are anywhere close to downtown, run on over to 17th. The parade started at Union Station, goes 15 blocks all the way down towards the Brown Palace, and it is worth seeing those 40 longhorn steer that made their way through. They were just clomping along, and their horns were massive. I know, just gigantic. And now it kind of smells a little bit like a, like stock a show. farm, like a stock <laughs> show, as it should, right? Of course, now it looks like we're awaiting the gorgeous royalty that will be coming down. They have their parade waves. Mm -hmm. We've tried to perfect ours. Not working at all. Uh huh. But uh, I mean, this place is packed. And again, finally, Mother Nature cooperating for us, giving us just a gorgeous sunny day to enjoy all the fun and really kick off such a big event that goes on in Denver every January. Absolutely. And boy, here comes the next round of tractors. These beautiful pieces of machinery. I love the stock show parade. It just feels like it's time to head on over to the National Western Complex and check out not only opening weekend but the 16 days that progress after that so gary wish you were down here with us because this place is just it's packed hopping. yes it's uh, it is so much fun yeah you get to wear your cowboy boots and you don't feel out of place at all it's awesome hey thanks guys great point <laughs> appreciate it the trump administration announced it wants to vastly expand offshore drilling ah that's already generating a lot of backlash The Trump administration is moving to open up nearly all federal waters for oil and gas drilling, giving the energy industry access to fields in the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans and the eastern Gulf of Mexico that have been off limits for decades. That includes opening up federal waters off the coast of California for the first time in more than three decades. The new five-year drilling plan could also open up areas of oil and gas exploration on the east coast from Georgia to Maine. The expansion is likely to trigger huge political backlash, particularly on the west coast and in Florida. That's where offshore drilling has generated opposition from residents, environmental groups, and businesses who fear a uh, BP Gulf of Mexico type spill that devastated beaches and hurt the tourism industry. We have a safety recall to pass along. Comfort Research is recalling ultra lounge beanbag chair covers. It's a nationwide recall. The problem, they believe the covers are a suffocation hazard for kids. Apparently they can be opened by children who can crawl inside, become trapped and suffocate or choke on the chair's foam beads. We have specific item numbers and other information in our mobile app or at 9news.com. Still ahead on 9 News, at, uh, 9 News at noon, the art-loving people of Denver have a treat coming their way. Two words, meow, wolf.
If your commute takes you along I-25 downtown Denver, you probably saw this mess or might have been in it. A fatal crash closed down northbound lanes at Spear Boulevard for hours. The crash happened just before 5 a.m. It took till after 7 to get three lanes of traffic open. It's not clear how many people were involved in the wreck or the identity of the person who was killed. Police are still investigating the cause of that crash. After a successful inaugural season last year, the Winter Park Ski Train is back. Train service from Denver's Union Station to Winter Park Resort kicks off for the season tomorrow. It will then run every Saturday and Sunday through March 25th. There's going to be a special kickoff party tomorrow night at Union Station. You can expect music and tours of the train, the Winter Park Express. And since there's booze at the party, Lyft is offering discount for getting to and from there. By the way, train ticket prices this year will be less than last year. You can get them through Amtrak. President Trump's former campaign chairman Paul Manafort is suing special counsel Robert Mueller and the Justice Department. Manafort argues that Mueller exceeded his authority when he investigated him for conduct that wasn't related to the Russian interference in the 2016 presidential election. Manafort was indicted in October for money laundering and foreign agent work for Ukrainian interest. He has pleaded not guilty to those charges. A new exhibit is coming to Denver. We're talking about 60,000 square feet of immersive art experience. You may have heard of a fabulous permanent immersive art exhibit in Santa Fe with the unique name of Meow Wolf. Now people in the Denver area are going to get to experience it. The arts and entertainment group that runs it is going to open one in Denver. Here's a rendering of what it'll look like. The exhibit will be located south of Elitch Gardens near Colfax Avenue and I-25. It'll be a 70 feet tall exhibit with 60,000 square feet of art. Should open by 2020. It'll be bigger than the one in Santa Fe. But the designers say like that one, it'll be a great place where guests can discover a multi-dimensional mystery house with secret passages, portals to magical worlds, climbing apparatus, and surreal and mesmerizing art exhibits. Can't wait for that. Here's a final look at our temperatures today, and it's going to be downright balmy today, near 60 degrees, and then on Friday, in the mid 50s, Saturday near 62. We take a dip on Sunday, could have some rain or some snow, according to Marty and Danielle on Sunday. And then all next week, the sun comes back out, it looks like, and it's gonna be dry and very mild. So just a little bit ago, we were listening to uh, Danielle and Amelia describe the steers going by on 17th Street. It's the National Western Stock Show kickoff parade. Here's what it looked like. The parade's still going on if you want to head down there. It is National Stock Show Week starting on Whoa. Saturday. That's it for 9 News at Noon. Have a great day.